broadswords, knights in shining armor, and castles and moats. It's top 10 messed up things that men went through in the medieval ages part two. Number 10, famine. This was not modern times and nowhere close to the industrial agriculture industries we have today. Most folks lived in small towns that were self-sufficient with their farms and animals. After paying up or giving up what they had to their lords, of course, the commoners were not left with much. Men were expected to work all day to provide for his lord, family, and himself. Trouble is, if something even slightly disrupts the farming process, and trust me, there's a lot of factors that would lead to that, uh, then some people are gonna go hungry. When people get hungry, they do crazy things. I was crazy once. They locked me in a room full of rubber. Rubber makes me crazy. I was crazy once. They locked me in a room full of rubber. Rubber makes me crazy. Number nine, war. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Uh -huh -huh. You guys love that song, I know you do. Picture this. You're a serf working day and night to feed your family. When a town crier brings news to you that your village is gonna be under attack and the invaders have been seen coming over the hill, just over yonder, it's somewhere over there. It's, it's over there. The king is sending his best knights to defend the castle, but you know, like many other folks in many other towns, that to protect your family and your stuff, your pitchfork is gonna need a sharpening. And maybe a fire buff. I like fire buffs, they're cool. Yes, war, the worst invention of mankind, when you think about it. War means you need soldiers, and that means men. Except for a few exceptions like Joan of Arc. You can throw them in too. Sadly for the peasants, it's a matter of protecting what's theirs. There's no glory in fighting for someone else's glory if it means your farm gets burned down in an attack, and then you can't eat, and then no one's hungry, and ah, no good. Number eight, pestilence. In case you didn't know, you probably do, but sickness was an issue for the folks in medieval times, especially if you're a man who's working in the fields or the markets or the public, trying to bring home whatever form of currency is appropriate for the area. You can't do anything if you're sick in bed, or at least that's what I used to tell my mom when I wasn't totally faking a stomachache because I didn't want to go to school. I totally wasn't faking it. I was sick. But a big bug going around at the time in people's tummies was the bubonic plague. Yeah, classic. The big one. Some statistics suggest staggering numbers of people succumbing to the plague. Millions of people and the plague isn't a pretty one. Skin turning black from necrosis, boils, blisters, ugh, it's a bad look. You don't, you don't want it. Number seven, serfdom. While not exactly like YouTube's least favorite S word, it's kind of similar and it sucks. Basically, you're in the lowest of the low in terms of peasantry. You are forced to farm and tend the land that the Lord owns. There's nothing like breaking your back for a guy who doesn't know that you're breaking your back for him. I'm curious, guys. Let me know what's been your worst job and why. I'm, I'm gonna read some comments again in a later video. But yeah, being a serf sucked. Imagine after all that awfulness that you have to pay your boss rent too because you also live on the property that you work. Yeah, not so fun. Pretty messed up. I'm glad we don't do that anymore. Number six, Jester. Imagine trying to write funny and comical things day in and day out until your fingers cramp. And you have to perform your material in front of a bloodthirsty crowd who's just itching to say something the second you make a mistake. Or if you upset the king, it could cost you your head. What a crazy job, right? Huh, I know. However, one jester had it all figured out. The one thing that binds us all together as humans, the type of comedy no scholar or peasant alike can escape, farting. Yes. Take Roland the farter, for instance, whose job was to fart. Every Christmas, he would show up to the king's place and just let her rip. Boy, do I wish that was my job. Because, honey, let me tell you something. I got some special stuff up in my arsenal. Number five, assassination. Let's say for a second you ain't such a bad guy. Let's say you're a king that everyone likes. You listen to the people's woes of hunger and pain. You distribute the wealth and your fashion isn't too ridiculous for the time. And I'll get to that later because that's, that's definitely a point. You care, which for the time is rare. Well, that's too bad because a lot of men in history, whether they were loved, hated, or something in between, there's always someone lurking around the corner waiting to pour poison in your ear whilst you sleep. Yes, the art of assassination, or at least as I'm told it uh, from ninja movies and Assassin's Creed. Many have and will succumb to an assassin, whether it was for political, financial, or just crazy reasons. It happens, and for some reason, no one ever expects the hidden blades. Well, I know, I know Ezio, and, and I would never let my guard down for a second to allow that to happen. All right, we're good, we're fine. Just checking. Number four, boiling in oil. 
Okay, let's just say you got caught in a Shakespearean crime of attempting to poison your king. Something about poison of the ear or something. Oh, do not fear, good friends. Cause you better call Ched. That's right, your, your internet lawyer. Doctor, fireman too. Don't forget that, I'm a doctor and a fireman. I do it all, folks. Well, I'd come to defend you in trial, but this isn't exactly a time for fair trials and innocence until proven guilty. And the opposite. I mean, come on, you got off easy, kid. They're just gonna boil you in oil, it's easy. Roaring flames, big metal pot, and they're slowly gonna dip you in. Won't be that bad. You'll be screaming in pure agony for five, ten minutes tops. What's the worst that could happen? Well, it'll be the worst pain that you've ever felt in your entire life, but hey, at least you look like a Popeye's drumstick later, am I right? Anyway, kid, if you need my legal service again, just uh, give me a call, if you can. I gotta go help this bald guy in an RV, something about a lab, I don't know. Good luck. Number three, men's fashion. I know it was a long time ago, but what the heck happened? Calves were in, like big, they like big calves for some reason, I don't know why. I got big calves, you know what I'm saying? And so were Wario shoes, because Wario. As much as I love Wario, since I basically am him, I mean, that doesn't mean I wanna look like and feel like him. Longer the shoes, the higher the social status. Weird, right? I know. This was also the era of tunics, and if there's anything I've learned from watching Hollywood movies, and I've learned a lot, it's that you don't trust a guy in a tunic. So, if everyone around you is wearing a tunic, who the heck can you trust? Sheesh, no wonder kings were so paranoid. Except for Link, he's cool. We, we, we can trust him, we like Link from Zelda, he's, pre he's pretty sick. As for poor men and serfs, you wore basically whatever you could make or afford, which isn't much. There's no long shoes in the potato fields. I'll stick to my plaid. Lots of plaid. I can't help it, I'm Canadian. Number two, the rack. Ever just wake up one morning and give a big old stretch because it's Saturday morning, you got to sleep in, the sun's shining, and your bones feel warm from a little bit of sun that's just creeping through from the window. You take a deep breath of fresh air and walk downstairs to your fridge to prepare a feast for breakfast, fit for a king. To think of a day like that starts with a stretch. Well, medieval men got to stretch too, thanks to the help of a device called the rack. Think of a ratchet strap, except instead of your dad yelling at you to make sure the trailer is strapped down, you're the strap that's being stretched. Yes, the rack was a means of torment. Basically, your ankles were tied down at one end, your wrists were tied down at the other, and a large sweaty man turns a gear, and then you get stretched out like a pair of jeans you haven't worn since high school. No, that's right, I know. No, you can keep trying them on, but they ain't gonna fit. That's okay, keep telling yourself that, that's fine. Mine don't fit either. Number one, bloodletting. This is just always so weird to me. I, I, I just don't do well with blood at all, actually. I, I got some stories about that, maybe for another day. But basically, there was this medical practice floating around back then. If you were sick, not well, or you just needed to refresh, a medical professional, and I use that term loosely, a medical professional would treat your veins the same way your dad treats a Ford Bronco getting an oil change. Ooh, gross. Did it help? Eh, not really. Am I getting lightheaded just thinking about it? Yes, yes I am, actually. And, I, and I'm being for real, I, I get lightheaded thinking about it. Not even kidding on that one. For real, getting woozy. That's gonna wrap it up for me today, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you too wanna drink some Kool-Aid with me, come on, it'll be fun. Then check out my socials down below. I've been your host, Big Ched, and stay sweet, my little honeybees. The forbidden Kool-Aid. I got some special stuff up in my arsenal. Chris can tell you, he'll, he'll let you know. He, he, he's seen it firsthand. Firsthand, he's seen it. Poor guy. Nice. No, but they can't do that. Because they say, I, I, okay, never mind. I'm just going to stop talking.